Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Colonel S Sam Smith, your garrison commander on behalf of Brigadier General Doyle. Uh, we wanted to welcome you uh, here to the second annual um, education summit that we're sponsoring um, on the installation. Uh, we are honored today that we have uh, several of our community members, our congressional leaders, our stakeholders, our board members uh, from Born Vernon Parish, um, and our teachers. Uh, thank you for joining us, greatly appreciate it, and those watching on Facebook and YouTube. It's good, to, uh, it's good to be here. So we're here to talk about our continued partnerships and how we move forward together by addressing our concerns with our community, our teachers, our parents, um, the school board, and our installation, and how we can move forward. And so throughout the day, you'll hear, you'll hear um, several of our board members and community members talk to you about what initiatives that we have done, where we were, where we are, and where we are going. Um, so the summit, uh, the main purpose of this annual summit that we're having is to improve communication between all of the education stakeholders we have. Um, so whether that's students, teachers, uh, parents, administrators, district leadership, school board members, and our community, and those on JRTC, that's what we're here today, is to be fully transparent and inclusive and everybody understanding where we're going together uh, between the school board and our installation. So at this moment, what I'll do is I'll hand it over to our wonderful school liaison officer, Ms. Uh, Tiffany Cook, who's going to go through uh, some of the formalities and agenda and introduce our members today. Tiffany? Good afternoon, and again, welcome to JRTC and Fort Polk's 2021 Ed Summit. Today, from the Vernon Parish School Board, we have Mr. James Williams, Superintendent, Mr. Mike Kay, Assistant Superintendent and Human Resources Director, Mr. Tim Ward, Finance Director, Ms. Ann Smith, Curriculum Director, Mr. Joey Whitten, Title I Director, and Ms. Lisa Lohman, the Curriculum Supervisor, as well as Ms. Leslie Ortiz, the Curriculum Supervisor for Special Education. Joining us from our local community, we have Ms. Lee Turner, representing Congressional Representative Mike Johnson, Representative Charles Owens, Mr. Logan Morris, Vernon Parish Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, and Ms. Tammy Sharp, Fort Polk Progress Community Relations. Joining us from the Fort Polk team, we have Colonel Aristotle, Colonel Aristotle Vasilides, Bain Jones, Army Community Hospital Commander, Mr. Kevin Goak, Chief of Behavioral Health for Bain Jones Army Community Hospital, Ms. Marie Schultz, Exceptional Family Member Program Manager, and Ms. Stacey Delgado, Employment Readiness Program Manager. Mr. Williams will now share some opening remarks, followed by a few of his team members. Uh, thank you, Tiffany, and thank you, Colonel Smith, and your staff for allowing my students to come out and visit with me today. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we have in public education is communication with our stakeholders. And that's not just a challenge that is limited to Louisiana, or Fort Polk, or Vernon Parish school system. That's a nationwide challenge that we all face on a daily basis. So in cooperation with the goal of this summit today, it's our Hope that we can communicate and, of course, communicate the, the correct information and, and all the good things that we had going on in the school system and the opportunities we had for your children to be able to afford them quality education. Uh, so, that being said, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about our school system. Uh, we have 18 different schools. We serve about a little over 8,000 students. Out of that 8,000 students, about 20% of them are military dependents. We have military dependents and military retiree dependents and military retiree folks that are in all 18 of our schools. But the majority of our military population would be centered around the lethal schools, the uh, North Polk Elementary, Parkway Elementary, Pickering, and Rosebach. Again, we have military in all 18 schools, but the, the focus and the majority would be around those schools that I mentioned in the last sense. Our breakdown for the way that our school system is set up, uh, the dynamics of our school system is that we have five pre K to 12 structured schools, we have three pre K to 6 uh, elementary schools, we have three 7 to 12 junior high school combinations. We have two first and fourth elementary schools, two early head start kindergarten centers. One of those is the one at North Polk that I mentioned. We have one fifth and sixth middle school, one seventh and eighth junior high, and one nine through twelve. 
So the dynamics of the structure of our school, the way our, our schools are set up, diversifies so it fits the needs of almost every military family. And then, of course, the families of, that we serve throughout the parish. Uh, with that being said, a lot of our emphasis is tracked through the, our military 20% population. A lot of our emphasis comes to our corporation that we have working through the years of commander, our school liaison officer, and also the people of Fort Polk. Again, for us to sit here at Fort Polk to talk about the educational summit for our parish, it is a little bit different for us because normally when we address our republic and our school system, we think of us as being one school system with a very diverse population of of rural, local people, uh, town people, military uh, people coming in, military people who have been here and retired. And, and it's just something that we kind of do naturally and, and it's something that we work very hard to be very good at. Uh, we're in, as you know, a very rural community in Vernon Parish, uh, and there's not a whole lot of extras that our parish offers for people coming into Fort Polk. But the one thing that I'm very proud of, and you'll see what I'm talking about after my staff begins to talk to you a little bit, is that we can offer the few of the children quality education when you come to Fort Polk. So that being said, I, I just wanted to kind of introduce you to what we're doing and how we're doing it at the Burn Bear School System. And uh, I'll finish it by saying that we have very high academic standards. Uh, we place very high with the state testing. We can make high national testing as well. And uh, we take a lot of pride in that. We work very hard in that. And we do that through uh, the communication and cooperation with the military community and our state community, whether it be students or teachers or employees. And we all kind of pitch in and work together to achieve that goal. So, that being said, again, I'll pass it back to Stephanie and we'll let her go through her agenda. Again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Okay, Tiffany, before you go on, I wanted to, uh, thanks, uh, Superintendent, Mr. Williams. I, I wanted to al also uh, state up front part of uh, the two principles that we're going to be guided by, at least throughout my two years uh, in command here, is being inclusive and listening. And so what I wanted to do is to give some framework uh, to what Mr. Williams was saying, is based on our school systems here at Fort Polk, the top three reasons uh, that we hear why families do not come with their military member to Fort Polk is based on housing, education, and employment. And so what we're talking today is about education. And so I've heard from a lot of families and the perception about education in our community, and we are really gonna tackle that perception. So to that end, what you'll see throughout uh, social media and our engagements and our public affairs announcements is you'll see that our Vernon Parish and our Beauregard School Parish uh, systems, we rank number three and number five in math and reading and number three in preparing high school seniors for college based on test scores. So that is phenomenal. Could we be number two, number one? Yes, and we're striving to get there. But number three and number five in math and reading is a quality education. Um, and so we're gonna get after, at least during my tenure for the two years that I'm here, to cut the number of families that don't come here in half. So after two years, the goal is to get down to 500 because we're missing 1,000 families. Uh, that could take advantage of our quality education we have in the surrounding community. And we look forward to getting your feedback on how we continue to improve. Um, so with that, ma'am, Tiffany. So as uh, Colonel Smith stated, please leave your comments. You will also have at the end of the presentation, we will give you links where you can leave a general site comment as well as an ICE comment for Fort Polk School Support Services. Um, I do want to remind everyone out there that ICE is also to give suggestions. So it is a great tool for when something's not working right and you want to tell us how to get better. Um, our community does a great job of that. But it can also be used to evaluate successes and it can also be used to give ideas and suggestions. So you'll have that opportunity um, with a QR code at the end of this presentation. Right now I want to just elaborate a little bit on the third and that's when you look at all kinds of different installations where you and your families may have been. And so what you don't understand um, is maybe where the school that you were at was offering a great program, but you don't understand what the whole district was doing. Um, so we've laid that out and this will also be available 
um, when we post this to YouTube, there will be links where you can go back to the web and pull a brochure that kind of looks at Fernan Parish, Volgard Parish, and how they compare to other installations um, around the United States. Yeah, so Tiffany, I'll uh, interject here again. So uh, full transparency is what I've talked to the, the families and our parents about is there's only two current Army DOD schools that beat um, our school system, JBLM um, and Fort Belfort. And so that's why we rank number three across all the Army installations on our quality education. Ma'am. So with that, we are going to share some of the things that Mr. K is going to share an overview um, to kind of let you know if you've known nationwide there is a teacher shortage. So you may be hearing some of those things in your school or your kids may be telling you about things. So Mr. K is going to now share kind of an overview of staffing and what they do to make sure that they are ensuring quality education. Well, that, and that will go along with the uh, what uh, Colonel Smith mentioned about uh, employment. Uh, at this time, uh, and this goes up every year, believe it or not, uh, we have roughly 90 uh, military dependents, uh, military connected people that are employed in our school system, which is up a little from last year. Uh, we actively engage in recruiting. Uh, the last four uh, employees that were hired full-time in Vernon Parish School System were uh, military dependents. Uh, and we, we do enjoy that relationship. Uh, in, in the course of the last uh, probably eight years, uh, it's anyway between uh, 2013 October and 2020 October, uh, we, uh, we saw a, a loss of roughly 1,420 military students. Uh, and that had an impact on what we were able to do uh, staffing wise. We have to adjust our staffing based on uh, what our student enrollment is and we have to be prepared for those things and, and it's, a, it's a challenge. Uh, you know, we're, we're living in some times that are uh, uh, very uh, volatile as far as finances are concerned. We don't know what the climate will be like, you know, in the next year. We just have to look at patterns and try to make educated guesses on it. But we will, uh, at any time, when a military spouse comes in, uh, I have a real good relationship with Miss Stacy Delgado in the back there. Uh, uh, she has all my contact information and she's connected me with several. Uh, I will say that I've gotten a call in the middle of the day from Colonel Smith. I just talked to a military spouse that w wants to teach, and I'm, here's the contact information, and he's connected us. Uh, board members running into people in Walmart and out in the community sending me a text message saying, hey, here's a number, you need to contact this person. They may be able to drive a bus for you. So we, we fill those positions that way. Uh, I have numerous uh, questions about posting uh, job openings on the website. Well, the, that would be a twice a day ordeal to try to keep a list going and changing it constantly. And so my best advice to people when they come into the area is to uh, contact me directly. Uh, my, my email address is Michael dot k at vpsb.us that's m-i-c-h-a-e-l dot k-a-y at vpsb.us and uh, i'll be more than happy i sit down frequently with uh, spouses to explain to them how to become a certified teacher in the state of louisiana and uh, a little bit later uh, in our program i'm going to go over uh, how you become a teacher i would like to run run through that process with you uh, but it's uh, it's been a, a, a great uh, experience working uh, with Colonel Smith and with Miss Cook. Uh, they they're very big advocates for the military families, and they are very easy to work with. And uh, I appreciate uh, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. K. We will now have Mr. Ward, and he will share, as Mr. K said, um, finances. They are, it is a public school system. So public funds is what funds the school system. So Mr. Ward will now um, tell you a little bit about, about funding, um, the different pots of money that come in and how they make sure that they are using 
their funds to make sure that our kids get a quality education. Yeah, so, uh, so before you go in, I just want to give you some top cover here. Um, so a lot of the comments from spouses that I've personally heard uh, is how much money does the Army give to our school system and where does it go? And so it's a complex, uh, obviously, a challenge to account for all of that, but here's what we're trying to do to be fully transparent, and we owe that to you. But I, I can tell you, as being uh, part of uh, the school board system, uh, they welcome the garrison commander as part of that board, is that we do talk about uh, education issues and we get after that. Uh, so, sir. Thank you, Colonel Smith, Tiffany. Um, like I said, my name is Tim Moore. I'm the director of finance for the Vernon Parish School Board. Just to give you a little synopsis of our funding that we get as a school system, um, our budget is approximately $110 million. Now, that's made up of various revenues. We have 20% of our revenue comes from local sources, 52% from state sources, and 22% from federal sources. Um, so when we say local, we're talking property and local sales tax. Um, state is mostly our MFP, which is our main funding source, uh, and that is student-driven. As most of our um, revenue is, it is based off the number of students that we have in our system. So just about all our funding is based on the number of children that we have. Um, of course, we're kind of a unique system. Uh, we have approximately 8,000 students. Uh, we have 22% of our students are military connected uh, and 10% are DOD civilian. So we have about 32% that are overall fairly connected students. With that, um, we do receive revenue based on those students, which is called Impact Aid. Impact Aid is a program that the Department of Ed Education administers, which substitutes for local property taxes. So basically because we have a federal um, land that's owned here in our parish um, the federal government pays us um, for those property taxes for that land basically instead of receiving local property taxes basically the federal government paying that property taxes um, a lot of people are misunderstand the program they think it's based on the number of children that we have in the system they use that as a avenue to um, to fund the program, but it's really for loss of revenue from property taxes because of the federal land that's located in our parish. Um, so we get other federal revenue such as Title I, um, IDA, uh, specific um, programs that are funded for specific purposes for um, federally connected children. Um, we also, um, just to give you an example, Impact Aid makes up approximately about 5% of our overall revenues. Um, just to give you uh, a little bit of perspective of, of how our revenues are made up. Most of our revenue comes from the state, and it's based on, again, the number of children that we have in our system. Uh, we'll go over some of these programs a little bit later um, on into our, um, in our, to our uh, menu here, and then we'll um, discuss some of these as we go along. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams, Mr. Kay, and Mr. Ward. It's a pleasure to work with you day in and day out to ensure our Fort Polk families are receiving a quality education. Thanks to the Quality of Life initiatives at Fort Polk, we have had the opportunity to enhance the quality of education offered here. Today, we will celebrate that by signing a memorandum of understanding for partnership. <clears throat> we will also be bringing on school-based behavioral health and we will sign that memorandum of agreement now. That was the Quality of Life project that started over two and a half years ago. So we are very excited to have these opportunities. Great. Bail. Commander. Superintendent. Bail. Great. I'm going to sit so I can talk while y'all sign. So the first is a memorandum of understanding at Fort Polk and the Vernon Parish School System will continue to work together and communicate. The second is a memorandum of agreement between Bain Jones Army Community Hospital, the Vernon Parish School System, and U.S. Army Garrison Fort Polk, ensuring that Vernon Parish will provide a space and time for students to receive much needed services in school-based behavioral health. If you would like more information about either one of these, you can leave it in the comments or again when you have the opportunity to leave an ICE comment or site suggestion. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ooh. 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 Thanks. Thank you. We are excited for both of these programs. We will now go over what we would like to call our big wins for enhanced education on the installation and in the local school system. If you have any of the questions about these big wins and what they mean for you and your family, please place them in the comments below. Okay, school. so tipping down, I'm tracking that we have 12 of these. Yes, sir. Right, 12, so I know we're gonna talk about some of these, but just to highlight some of the school behavior health that we just signed on again after that, Starbase, Extend, ex expanded STEAM opportunities that we're looking forward to, to move forward on. Um, the STEM Center participation with uh, our local state Department of Education, our school liaison uh, volunteering uh, program we have, our Head Start at North Polk Elementary, um, our use of technology uh, to move forward uh, some of our STEM issues, our out of state teacher certification legislation, and our Purple Star legislation. Yes, sir. Cool. We'll expand on a few of those and how we're going to move forward to make those better. And we will also cover today some of the things that we would like to start as new initiatives to enhance education. Incoming families are sometimes concerned about the course offerings in our area. Recently, a quality of life project was to expand DOD education activity, so DODEA, virtual high school access to our military connected students requesting advanced placement courses or unique course offerings to meet the Louisiana graduation requirements or the state where they were residing. Ms. Lohman will now tell you a little more about how we have utilized that project and other ways that the Vernon Parish School System works to expand their course offerings. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Lowen and I work as a curriculum supervisor for the Vernon Parish School Board and I am excited to have the opportunity to share the good things about the Vernon Parish School System. As I sit here today, there are three things that I really think about when we want to promote not only Vernon Parish but the strong partnership that we have with Fort Polk. I think about communication, consistency, and commitment. Those three things have to be evident in everything we do. When we think about communication, we want to effectively communicate the successes of our school district. We are a great school district and we are proud of the achievements that our system has accomplished and what we can offer to incoming military families. When we think about consistency, we want to consistently push to show that we are dedicated to providing the best educational experience for all students in our system, whether they are civilian or military, it doesn't matter. We want to provide that quality experience for them. And then when we think about commitment, we have to make a commitment to be a true team. It has to be a true partnership between the school district and the military installation. And we are committed to making that happen so that we do have more families who want to bring their children so that we can have the opportunity to give them the quality education that they deserve. So a couple things that I'd like to share with you about expanded curriculum opportunities. Um, dual enrollment is a program that we offer in our district. Uh, we offer dual enrollment in all of the core subjects and many of the elective courses as well. We have programs in our district, um, one that I am super, super proud of, which we have just implemented this year, is a program called Fast Forward. This is a program that allows students in our district to earn an associate degree at the same time that they are still in high school. Um, I serve on the Southwest Region uh, Committee for Fast Forward, and Vernon Parish is the lead agency for promotion of this program. And we currently have 91 students who are pursuing an associate degree in Vernon Parish. Our students step out of high school with their high school graduation diploma as well as an associate degree from one of our post-secondary partners, whether it's Northwestern or Sewella or CLTCC. So we are extremely proud that we can offer that program to our students. 
And in fact, we will be promoting Vernon Parish at the Jumpstart Convention in January. I will be doing a presentation to promote that publicly, to say that we do promote this program. We absolutely want our students to have this opportunity. It's a great time for students to engage in dual enrollment while still in high school and have the ability to be successful on the collegiate level before they even leave high school. So we're super excited that we can offer that program. Uh, we also offer AP courses at several of our high schools. We offer 11 different subjects that students can engage in AP coursework on. And one of the other programs that we have recently added is the new E2P2 program through the virtual Dodea program, where we have students who can take AP courses. Um, maybe they are enrolled at one of our rural schools who do not have the opportunity to offer as many AP courses as some of the other schools. So we've expanded into the E2P2 program and we currently do have students who are enrolled in that program and are being successful with that. So we are definitely excited about those programs. Um, one that we are really super excited about is a new program that I've taken ownership of, which is our STEM program. We know that STEM has been an area that has been a bit of a concern in our area. And so Mr. Williams asked me to strengthen the program, provide opportunities for students in K through 12 for STEM activities. So we have added several programs that are available to our students in Vernon Parish, and we're excited about that. So I'd like to share just a few of those with you today. Um, one of the first programs we have is Amazon Future Engineers, which is designed for our middle school students. We implemented the program this year. It is a computer science-based program which teaches students um, basic coding skills. We engage in Scratch, which is the coding program that our students um, learn to manipulate. We started with sixth grade this year. Next year, we will include seventh grade. And then the following year, it will be pushed up to eighth grade. So that will give us a complete middle school computer science coding program for all of our schools who have the six through eight configuration. Um, so we are actively engaged in that program now and the students are responding well and they are loving the coding piece that they are now engaged in. Um, the next STEM project that we incorporated into our district is the LSU um, Computational Thinking STEM Pathway. We have this one at Leesville High School. Uh, we partnered with Louisiana State University to offer Introduction to Computational Thinking and Cybersecurity at our schools. This program is designed to enhance students' analytical reasoning and thought processes so that we're doing comparative study of how these students enrolled in these classes actually perform in algebra and geometry. So there should be a direct correlation between the engagement in the classes that we're providing and then the outcomes in algebra and geometry. And we have that class at Leesville High School. We're actually offering both of those. So the students who enrolled in computational thinking this year will enroll in cybersecurity next year, and then they'll do a flip so that they get two complete years of the LSU STEM um, pathway. A uh, third project that we offer is um, Ingevity STEM Greenhouse Project that is at Rose Pine Elementary. Rose Pine Elementary does a phenomenal job of promoting the STEM program in our district. They have several um, activities that they do. They send me pictures all the time of kids engaged in STEM-based projects, and the students are super excited. They love going to STEM lab and seeing the new careers that are actually available. And like I tell everybody, you can't be what you can't see. So if we can't show students the opportunities that are there and know that they can engage in STEM, uh, then they may never know what possibilities actually exist. Um, a fourth project that we are super excited about is the VEX IQ Robotics Program. We actually have this at seven of our schools. We have this at West, Vernon, Parkway, Pickering High, Pickering Elementary, uh, Leesville Junior High, and Hicks High School. So seven of our schools are engaging in a robotics uh, program. We have placed the teachers through uh, 
professional development opportunities so that they are ready to engage and teach these students um, the process of program creating a robot, programming the robot, and then we actually will do competitions so that we will do inter-squad competitions in the district and then we will also go to competitions and compete around the state with the VEX IQ robotics. And that is um, available for students in grades four through eight. So we are super excited about that one. And then the final project that we're doing is Learning Blade. Learning Blade is um, a STEM computer science CTE resource. It is provided to our district. It is funded currently by Boeing and the STEM Center. And this provides computer science CTE experience for students in grades five through nine. It is a brand new to our district, but our teachers have gone through the training and our students are actively engaged in the Learning Blade program, which has 12 different missions, STEM missions that the students can um, learn about different careers they learn about um, all of the stem opportunities and it is standards aligned for ela math science and social studies um, it's a great program it it will definitely enhance our stem offerings that we have in our district and so um, we are excited that we have heard the inquiries about providing more stem in vernon parish and so we have actively addressed these concerns and we do offer multiple um, STEM based activities at this time. Thank you, Ms. Lohman. We are also very excited at Fort Polk about the science, technology, engineering, art and mathematics that you all have going on in the district and we look forward to offering you all the star base opportunity in the future. Um, the building is under renovation now and we hope to have the program set up in the second semester of school. We're also most excited to go out and see some of those inner squad competitions um, with the VEX robots. Uh, we saw a little bit at Leesville Junior High. Um, they have a class devoted to it and uh, we're excited to see how the rest of the parish is, is gonna fare against them. Um, we'll move on now into some of our special education. Um, at this time, the gifted programs um, some of our parents felt like that the gifted programs are developed at each school and the model is inconsistent. Ms. Leslie Ortiz, the special education curriculum supervisor, will now um, elaborate on how they are working to make that model more consistent and some of the things they are doing for our students that are identified as gifted and talented. Hi, my name is Leslie Ortiz and I'm very excited to be here. Um, with our gifted and talented program, we are currently working to uh, realign our programs at each school so that there is more consistency. Um, the students qualify based on reading and math scores. So in the past, we have focused more on reading um, and we do have the ELA uh, enrichment, but we're now that we have the STEM opportunities, we're working to capitalize on that and to provide more enrichment in the areas of math. So we're very excited about those opportunities. Our talented program um, has grown exponentially in the last couple of years. Um, when I first started the job, we didn't have a talented program. We inherited two students from another parish who came to us uh, with a talented IEP. So. We started the program with two students and now we have over 22 students. So we were able to find somebody who uh, was qualified to teach talented music in the area of uh, vocal and instrumental. And she's also talent, uh, qualified to teach talented theater. So we are hoping to expand our program into the visual arts. So we're currently looking for a visual arts teacher for that. Um, and we're looking forward to showcasing the talents of our students across the parish. For special ed, we have currently um, 1,100 students as of our October 1 child count. Um, we serve our students under 12 different categories as outlined in Bulletin 1508. And those categories include our speech and our gifted and talented students. Um, and we are, we're really looking forward to um, enhancing our, our product, our curriculum and really getting in and working with those students. The Fort Polk relationship with the Vernon Parish Special Education Department and the Exceptional Family Member Program has seen leaps and bounds and gains. Um, with those continued lines of communication, it has made the initiative stronger. So we will continue the collaboration between 
the Garrison Command, the Exceptional Family Member Program, the Vernon Parish School Board Leadership, as well as the subject matter experts in each one of those areas. Thank you, Ms. Ortiz. Mr. K will now talk a little bit. Some of these programs have talked about how they are recruiting and looking for people that are talented and able to offer these programs within the school system. So Mr. K will now talk a little bit about how you can become a certified teacher in the state of Louisiana. Uh, one thing, uh, we, we have several different uh, ways that people come into our system. One is someone who has a bachelor's degree. They come in, in order for them to be able to be hired as a teacher in the state of Louisiana, they have to have that bachelor's degree and one of these things. They either have to have passing scores on the Praxis Core, they have to have a 22 composite ACT score, or an 1100 on the ACT, which is com combined critical thinking and reading, verbal and critical. Uh, also, they could have a master's degree. Any of those things would waive the requirement for the Praxis Core. Once they have those and they're hired, uh, we have uh, get the state to issue that certificate, then they will have one calendar year and the clock starts ticking from the issuance of that temporary authority to teach. One calendar year, they have to pass a content area exam in the level in which they were hired. For instance, if they were hired as a kindergarten teacher, they would have to pass a PK-3 test. And then, once they pass that, they enroll in an alternate certification program, and, and I'm always more than happy to help guide the person to this program that best suits their needs. Uh, as they complete that program, as long as they continue to stay in that program, the state issues what is called a practitioner's license. That practitioner's license can be renewed up to three years as long as they're following their program of study and stay on track. At the end of that, they must pass a principles of learning and teaching. That, that test incorporates the pedagogies and methodologies required to teach, and the program they're in teaches the teaches them those things so a good quality program is paramount in passing that test and acquiring that level one louisiana teaching certificate once they have that uh, it's good for three years and if they finish three years with us and they continue on they can get a level two certificate which is good for five years uh, the other person that might come into our system is someone who is teaching has a valid certificate in say virginia or florida North Carolina or Texas, they come in. Well, way back when the original uh, military compact was signed, there had been legislation passed, thanks to our legislature, to do a reciprocal agreement, basically. If someone came into our state with a valid teaching certificate from another state, we would issue them an OS certificate, which uh, uh, obviously means an out-of-state uh, person, but it's a Louisiana certificate, OS certificate. That person uh, has three three years on that certificate. If they had at least three years of experience with uh, uh, effective evaluations, then at the end of their three-year period working for us, they would be issued a level one Louisiana teaching certificate. If a person comes to us and they have a valid certificate, they just graduated from college, uh, wh wherever home's at, they come to the state of Louisiana with their new spouse, they have no teaching experience or less than three years, then that person would be issued an OS certificate, but they have up to three years to take and pass the content area exams and the uh, pr uh, principles of learning and teaching for the level in which they're teaching. Uh, and that's in a nutshell the way that it, that it works out. Now there are some variations of things, and as I said before, Ms. Delgado has my contact information. Uh, Ms. Cook does also, and they can connect you with me so we can talk, or you can email me at the email address I gave you earlier. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Mr. Kay, and I'm very excited that you mentioned the legislation. Um, we do want to thank our representatives for making sure um, that teacher reciprocity uh, legislation went through. We are now um, going to talk about the graduation pathways in the state of Louisiana. So one of the frustrations that our parents come in with is the TOPS graduation pathway or the TECH graduation pathways are very specific in requirements. 
Sometimes parents do not understand why their children may have to take additional courses or not get credit for courses that they have earned previously. Ms. Lohman will now walk us through the process of how we can work to ensure that the child is successful and doesn't have to go above and beyond to meet the graduation requirements, but kind of why those graduation requirements are in place and then how we help at the school level. Okay, thank you, Tiffany. We do have certified guidance counselors at all nine of our high schools, and we have two at Leesville High School, and they stand ready and willing to work with all students who are transitioning in. We understand that transitioning from one school district to another or from one state to another can be very challenging and sometimes a little bit overwhelming. Um, in Louisiana, there are very specific guidelines as to the courses that a student is required to take upon enrolling in a Louisiana school. One of the things that our counselors do is they carefully review all transcripts of incoming students, they evaluate those, and they award credit for as many of those classes that are possible. We never try to take away any credits that students have earned. Um, but we do have guidelines that we have to follow. So we have to work within our system, but we do work with the incoming students to make that transition as easy as possible. Um, we do have two diploma tracks that our students um, follow in Louisiana. They are either on a top university, which prepares them for the four-year university, or we have them on the TOPS Tech Career Diploma, which provides them with the opportunity to have the opportunity to earn a credential while still in high school, while preparing for entry into the workforce, uh, entry into the military, entry into a two-year technical college, which we have articulation agreements, which would allow that to transfer to a four-year university. So we do have multiple opportunities for students coming in. My guidance counselors uh, do a fantastic job of working with transitioning families. We do realize that sometimes students may come in with unusual circumstances or transcripts that may require a bit of time to go through, um, but we will try to escalate that transition process as quickly as possible so we get those kids into the program, get them in school and get them on a track and help them transition and be comfortable coming into our school system. Um, many of our counselors do a fantastic job of providing access to scholarship information. Many of our counselors have Google Classrooms that they provide students a code to, so all the scholarship opportunities, all information regarding graduation, all things pertinent to seniors and things they need to know, they post that in the classroom so students have 24-7 access to that. So we've um, incorporated that into our counseling program so that the information is readily available. And we also use career compass coaches that meet with all graduating seniors multiple times throughout their senior year to help them with post-secondary opportunities, scholarships, making sure they're on target to graduate and providing um, financial aid information to students. So we try to make sure that they have multiple opportunities to be exposed to the information which will help them in their post-secondary transition once they graduate from our high schools. Thank you. One way on the installation that we want to help in that regard is by trying to let our families know about those services prior to them getting here. And the Army as a whole has realized that that is an issue, not just at Fort Polk, but at other installations and that we can do better. Um, so in the coming year, we should be receiving those families' names much sooner than we used to receive them. Um, we used to know the soldier, but we wouldn't know the families and what the ages of the students were that were coming. And so now that that will be provided to us, um, we're excited that we can help. That moves us on to information and data and how that we can help each other. Ms. Smith is going to now, the Ms. Smith, the curriculum director for the elementary curriculum, is going to now share where data can be found um, and how our families can see all the great things that our school system is doing and what they report to the State Department. So good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm Ann Smith, uh, curriculum director for the district. Uh, you've heard 
communication, commitment, consistency. The single most important factor in that is communication with our parents. That parent holds information that we need as a school system to better meet the needs of your students. We are working hard to listen to the concerns of our parents, to open our doors, and to be as transparent as possible. We heard the concerns of possibly needing more STEM activities. That, in turn, helped us to take a better look at where we could improve to uh, the, the educational opportunities, not only for our military students, but for all of our students. Our district is data-driven. It We look at where students are, and then we look at ways that we can improve and provide the best possible education for every student. The transparency issue begins with the parent and the school. But there are some ways that parents can look at all of the schools, make some comparisons, and, and actually get a snapshot of everything that that school offers. The State Department provides what is called the School Finder. We are now in the transition of moving that to a new uh, ed link which will be a, do a better job of providing parents with data that they want to look at, either before they get to, to Vernon Parish or as they're, as they're working with their student in the parish, uh, look at that data for each school. We are happy to, to know now that in the last year, military child has become a subgroup for the state. So you can also look at your, your subgroup scores for your military students. Uh, we have a uh, K-3 uh, Dibbles. Uh, it's a reading assessment that all students are given to see if they're on benchmark. And that data is given the first 30 days of each school year and then reported back to, to our parents. Um, communication at the school level with parent-teacher conferences, with progress reports, and certainly um, the, the grades that we have that parents can access are all part of this. Um, you know, if, if, if there is a, a concern, reach out to your school counselor. That is your first um, interaction with your child, whether it's a, it's a positive or maybe some areas where we may want some support. Thank you. We will talk about some of our students that need extra support now. One way that we were very excited about in the beginning of this was a school-based behavioral health coming in to the district um, through Bain Jones Army Community Hospital. Just to let all of our families know out there, we also do provide military family life counselors within our district as well. Our most military connected schools have someone on campus assigned to that campus at least two days a week. If there is a military connected child who lives outside of one of those school districts, attends a different school, we do want to let you know that all you would need to do is contact an MFLAC, any one of them that's on the installation, or your school liaison officers, and we can put you in contact um, and get an MFLAC at that school to meet with your child on a regular basis if needed. We're now going to talk about some of our other special population students here. Um, experiencing speech delays, hearing impairments, occupational needs, or psychological needs, as well as visually impaired. And that will go back to Ms. Leslie Ortiz. Okay. We are very fortunate uh, in our parish to have qualified and li licensed professionals. Um, and we think this is very beneficial that we can offer these services in the schools. Currently, uh, we have 10 uh, speech pathologists that offer speech services in the school day. We have one hearing impaired teacher who services the different schools. We have three occupational therapists um, that work with this, the students during the day also. 
We approximately we have approximately 75 special ed teachers, and that's including our gifted and our talented teachers. Um, our school psychologists, we currently have two school psychologists and one of them is a behavior specialist. So they work with the children in the schools and they work with the school counselors. We have uh, two uh, certified school social workers that also work with um, our IEP students and they run small groups with the schools. We have uh, one VI visually impaired consultant that we have contracted out of Texas um, who comes once a week to work with our students and to braille materials for us. Uh, we currently uh, employ one sign language interpreter. We are in need of sign language interpreters, so we are currently contracting uh, through an online format at this time, but we are currently um, still looking for other sign language interpreters. Okay. Thank you. So all throughout this program, many of you have heard of opportunities that you can again join this team um, enhancing the quality of education for our students here at Fort Polk. So if you know any of these people who could plug into this team or may be interested, um, please reach out to your school liaison officer or please reach out to Mr. K. Um, he can also, if it is a special educator, like the American Sign Language interpreter, that's still gonna be your first stop um, is with Mr. K, the human resources director. So thank you, Ms. Ortiz, for that. We'll now talk about um, one of our family's concerns about the lack of extracurricular opportunities in the area. One way that Fort Polk is working with that is through our Quality of Life project. So students um, with Starbase coming on board here, it will be the first level of partnership will be with the school system. And the second level of partnership will be offering open house days as well as summer camps and STEAM opportunities. Um, we also want our parents to um, we have a robust child and youth service fitness program. Um, we're very excited to have also partnered with the Vernon Parish School System with that. So it'll be our first annual JRTC um, Fort Polk Fitness Competition out on the installation later this week. So if you're looking for something to do or you don't think an opportunity that you had at a previous installation um, and you think it's not here, it probably is. It may just look different. So please reach out to the school system. Um, you can also reach out to myself. We have regional specialized offerings for music. Um, we have private music lessons. We can hook you in with band teachers. Um, so just don't think that it's not here. Please ask so that we, number one, know that there's a need to bring it here and can work that as a quality of life initiative. Um, but as well, we may be able to plug you in um, and get your child back into that extracurricular activity they're missing so much. Ms. Smith is going to now cover um, many of the extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities that we have at our schools. So you can find on each school site what activities they provide. Because of COVID, this has slowed down some of our parental involvement as well as some of our activities, but we really look forward to, uh, to getting back to a more normal uh, situation. There are a couple of things that I do want to share or invite you to share with us um, as a partner. One is our K-3 literacy involvement that we're going to begin. It's a big part of our, our state initiative that filters down to our local initiative to help parents help students in the process of students learning to read and write. Young students beginning at pre-K through third grade, fourth grade, even sometimes higher, need that little bit of extra that parents can provide and help us in that learning uh, partnership. We are here because of because of you and we want to help your student in every way possible another thing that we need are volunteers to help us with our tutoring programs when i say volunteers i'm talking about paid volunteers we have opportunities for those spouses who may want to come in and help us in tutor in reading in in math at all grade levels we have a very robust tutoring support program that we do both during school and after school. We need volunteers to help, paid volunteers to help us during that school time so that 
teachers can have that assistance. We will train you. We will give you the materials. We use state approved materials that are aligned to what your students are learning. And we will, we will help you to help your students. Uh, this, is, um, this is at every school uh, in our district. So the first point of contact would be to reach out to your schools and say, do you need a tutor? I'm willing to work and we can get you lined, get your background check, get you uh, set up to do some of that work. This is a, a great benefit for, for us, for our military spouses who perhaps don't want to work full time. So with that being said, I'm going to ask Joey to, to, uh, to kind of add to what we are talking about in, in working through parent. Good afternoon. My name is Joey Whitten. I'm director of federal programs for our school system, especially Title I. Tiffany asked me um, to mention briefly about um, parental participation and um, volunteering opportunities. Um, a big component of uh, Title I is um, parental involvement. It's huge, and that includes um, parent volunteers. Moms and dad, I, dads, I want you to understand that our Title I schools, we have 15 Title I schools in our parish. That is part of what that program's about. Um, each school has at least a para, if not a, a fully certified teacher on staff. Uh, parental involvement is a big, huge piece of that. Um, we do a, a, a meeting each each year. It'll be in December. We will bring some parents in and do some, some training with them. But I want moms and dads to understand that um, volunteering at a school, if you want to volunteer, you reach out to that principal and that um, classroom teacher, that Title I teacher. And for the three non-Title I schools, which are Leesville High School, Anacoka High School, and Rosepine High School, I will reach out to those principals myself and make sure that, that they know for sure if, if moms and dads want to participate and volunteer, um, they can reach out to them. And moms and dads, I'm going to give you my number. It's 337 239 1657 that will ring directly at my desk if you do not get me leave a message and i will get back with you but if you want to volunteer our schools are open for parent um, volunteering and um there's that old saying uh, it takes a community to raise a child well moms and dads we sure need your support in, in our schools thank you um one thing um before i am going to turn it over to mr k um about the different employment initiatives that miss Smith discussed as well, is that the Volunteer Management um, Information System, VEMIS, now has school volunteer listed as an opportunity. So previously, you must have been volunteering on the installation and our schools were excluded. Um, we have worked hard to get that added in there. And so all we do is you would go in, you would put your hours in, and I am the point of contact for that. So when I see your name pop up, you would say what school you had volunteered at. I will contact um, either the Title I teacher, the guidance counselor, whoever the point of contact at that school is, verify your hours, and then it will go into the VEMA system um, for your quarterly award ceremony, um, credit back to your unit, and those different things. So parents, please, if, if volunteering is what's on your heart, as Mr. Uh, Whitten just said, they definitely need them in the schools, and we can give you, your unit, your soldier, your family, um, the credit through our VEMA system. Uh, Mr. K? Yes, and we do, uh, and I, I did not mention this, but we do employ substitute teachers, and, and when one comes in to sign up to tutor or whatever it is they're doing, they're going to go in and work with kids. We're required by state law to do a background check. Uh, an added twist uh, a few years ago, we, we also have to send those things uh, to the State Department the uh it's a form you fill out after we get the background check back we have to send it and get approval uh from the certification department state department of education uh, they issue what is called a ta a teaching authorization and all that means is they're a certified substitute to work in vernon parish uh those that one of the things that i really wanted to mention though to you about that is we're currently experiencing a 45 to 60 day turnaround on those things because as everyone well knows, we, we had an active hurricane season again this year. So the state's way behind on getting those things processed. They're still catching up from uh, from a few months ago. So uh, please, when you apply, just bear with us on those things. Uh, that doesn't really hinder us in hiring full-time people, but due to uh, statutes and uh, regulations, we have to we have to get that TA issued 
before a substitute can be used or tutor in the in the classroom. Uh, right now, we do have a few kindergarten positions, uh, a third one that will be open at the end of this week. Uh, probably I think two third grade positions left uh, I will need a high school math teacher at midterm uh, and these are at different schools, different places and we're just uh, there's probably going to be some more movement as uh, people receive orders and uh, we have uh, military spouses PCS and it's a two-edged sword we get some great teachers and by the same token, after two or three years, we lose some great teachers. Uh, but uh, my door is open. If you would like to investigate becoming a teacher or any other employee in Vernon Parish, feel free to contact me or come by my office. Thank you, Tiffany. So I think you've heard from everyone. If you feel disconnected, um, please try to get connected. And again, you can start um, with the School Support Service Office. Um, we do have a small team. Um, our other school liaison officer, Lindsay Sloggett, is here. And so you can contact either one of us um, and we can get you in contact with whatever way that you want to plug in um, and get connected. So again, if you feel disconnected um, and you want to be involved in the school system, please get with us so that we can help and figure out where um, you want to get started. So as Mr. Ward mentioned before, um, he will now kind of talk about the different programs in depth. Um, you've heard about all the great things that they do. And so now he's going to tell you about how he funds all those great things, because that's where they come to him when they want to do something is do we have the money to do it? So we'll turn it back over to Mr. Ward. To expound a little bit on impact aid. I know there's always a lot of questions, especially with military connected students and parents, on what impact aid is. Uh, impact aid is a federal program, again, like I said, it's administered by the um, United States Department of Education. The program is an in lieu of tax where the federal government is basically paying their property tax to the local school districts. Impact aid goes to local school systems to pay for teachers, to, for textbooks, for computers for any other education related um, materials that the school system needs. Um, Impact Aid was signed into law in 1950. Um, it has been around for quite a few years. Uh, the program also includes, um, not only includes federal property, includes low rent housing and Indian lands too. Uh, it, is full, it was fully funded up until 1970. Then in 1970, it was cut severely. Um, now we're funded at basically about a 60% level of need. Um, so, and it's, it is a program that is funded from year to year. It is not forward funded like most federal programs are. So we really do not know what that um, amount of um, impact aid is gonna be each year. So it really makes budgeting for impact aid very difficult. Um, we're usually well into our education budget year before we know what that funding level is going to be since usually the budget is supposed to be passed in October. Our fiscal year starts in July, so we're usually well into our year before we realize what our funding is going to be for that year. So, so, making, uh, so budgeting for this program has been difficult over the years. Um, but again, like I said, we use it. Um, we're already well into we've hired student um, teachers already we've purchased textbooks we've purchased computers and other materials into the year already before we actually realize what that funding level is um, to be eligible for impact aid a school system must have at least 400 federally connected students and or at least three percent of your overall student population to be eligible for impact aid so in, impact aid is really intended to be a supplement to our general fund um, and it is used, like I said, again, to educate students. And just to give you um, just a um, kind of a understanding of how it makes up our revenue, it makes up approximately about 5% of our uh, overall revenue. Um, sure. I want to kind of clarify because some of the confusion comes from when you come from Fort Benning or Fort Hood or, or Fort Lewis, what happens when you come from those states is, as Tim mentioned, impact aid money is using school systems simply it's a supplement because you see those states have property tax school tax those type taxes Louisiana doesn't Louisiana has homestead exemption Louisiana does not have school tax and what property tax that we do have in Vernon Parish 
is consumed mainly by federal lands. So for Vernon Parish, it's kind of unique than it is to the rest of the country because in the rest of the country, they get all the property tax. They get the, the uh, money from the school taxes and so forth. In Louisiana, we get zero. We get hardly any. So we take our impact aid and we use that, like Tim was saying, as a substitute. And there's a difference between a substitute and a supplement. And I think that's where some of the confusion sometimes comes in. Because, like I said, when you come from Fort Hood, you know, impact aid is just kind of like extra on the top. But when you come to Louisiana, impact aid is, is the top. That's all there is to it. And I think that's, and I just want to make that real clear as far as where I feel like some of the confusion comes from. Uh, because when you come from other states, uh, uh, impact aid money is very, very supplementary. And when you come to Louisiana, it's a substitute. So thank you, Tim. Okay, I also wanted to kind of go over, you know, we were talking about earlier what makes up our funding or what makes up our budget. Um, again, we are 20% locally funded. Like I said, local funds include property tax and sales tax as the main source of revenue. Uh, we are then 52% state funded, which our main source of funding from the state is MFPS, Minimum Foundation Program, that is funded on a per student basis, and that makes up the majority of our funding, somewhere, like I said, about 52%. We do get other various state grants. Uh, they're usually smaller grants, so MFP is our main state funding. Uh, now, our other portion comes from federal grants, which again includes impact aid, and that makes up 22% of our budget. We get specific grants such as Title I, IDA, Title II, grants such as those from the federal government that are for specific purposes um, to educate certain students. Um, some of the grants that we uh, also receive in addition to our normal federal uh, funding, we have got DODEA grants in the last three to five years. Uh, we currently have Project Navigate, which is a $1 million DODEA grant that is used at military-connected um, schools to help supplement um, teaching military-connected students. We've also had a couple other DODEA grants and approximately about $2.5 million over the last three to five years that we have used for the same purposes. Um, last year, we were really excited to receive a DSIP grant which is an infrastructure-based grant from the federal government to help improve facilities that are located off base. Now, we cannot use them for our own base schools, such as Parkway and Norfolk, but we did use them at our other five high um, military-connected schools. Uh, it is um, being used for Leesville High School, Leesville Junior High, Vernon Middle School, Pickering Elementary, and Pickering High School. Um, this was a $7.6 million grant. Again, like I said, it was for infrastructure. We are con constructing two buildings at each one of these um, school sites. One is a steam building, and one is basically a technology-oriented building. Um, some of the programs that some of our um, curriculum supervisors and directors have pointed out that we're going to be doing them with these buildings, so that will expand that opportunity for our students. Um, We've also doing and improved some of the infrastructure at the um, school sites too, such as bus coverings, um, outdoor learning centers, things of that sort. So we're kind of excited about that program. Thank you. So this will conclude um, the Vernon Parish and Fort Polk portion where we did look at the concerns that you had shared with our office. Um, what we want to, to tie into those grants um, that he just discussed, those are competitive grants, which means someone who has a full-time job within the Vernon Parish school system um, works either with a team or looking at data and coming up with, do we qualify and how can we get this grant in writing it? So we want to give a big thank you um, to all the team members on the Vernon Parish school system team who work to get those competitive grants so that we can enhance the education of our students. Um, we are now going to turn it over to our guest um, if they would like to um, come up and um, say any words to the Vernon Parish School System or JRTC in Fort Polk, um, any ways that they can help and any way that they look to partner with us. So we'll turn it over. 
Am I? Right. So, Mr. Uh, so yeah, they'll come up here. Uh, we're going to hear from Mr. Chuck Owens, Representative Owens. Sir. Right here, and right back there. Thank you, Tiffany and uh, Superintendent and Colonel for organizing this and for, uh, for all, all uh, everyone who came out and provided good input today. Um, for anyone who's watching online and considering coming here, um, I, I would say as a, as a Vernon Parish native, this, um, this, uh, this relationship that we have is a continuation of things that have been going on here for decades. Uh, one, one fact that is often forgotten about our, our superb superintendent is he's actually the son of a senior NCO, that the Army brought James Williams here many, many decades ago, and he and his family chose to stay here. And so th this, is, uh, this is a continuation of an effort. And Colonel, I, I am thankful that, that you, you are supporting transparency and getting things out, because it's so important because we're really all in this together. And I'm really, really thankful to hear you uh, of, of your goal where you're saying to, to cut in half the number of folks who, uh, who choose not to come here because this really is a good place to live. And uh, there are a lot of great educational opportunities here. Um, you know, our, our, the, the people who come here feel part of the community once they get into it. Uh, but a, a, a lot of places have, have reputations that are unjustified. And when people come here, they go, wow, this is really good. And uh, so that's, that's what I would encourage people to consider. And also for parents who, who are considering this, as, as if they have older children, is the pathway that we have in Louisiana uh, from high school into colleges, uh, the college, ex college and training and, and technical training experiences in Louisiana are fairly seamless. And they're also uh, very inexpensive on, an, on, on a national scale. The, uh, the, the, the scholarship opportunities that we have coming out of as a, for, for graduates of Louisiana High School are exceptional. Our technical training around this area has been growing. So there's, there's lots and lots of good reasons to, you know, to, to make Louisiana your home and, uh, and to consider coming here for three years. Now, I will share personally, a few weeks ago, we had, our, uh, we had a homecoming here at Leesville High School. And I'm, I was a graduate here 40 years ago. And, and we had several of my classmates come back who actually weren't even graduates of Leesville. They came here one or two years. Their father was an NCO or an officer, and they were only here one or two years. Didn't even graduate, but they still, they still felt attached 40 years later because of the experience and the, uh, the, the openness and, and the warmth that we have in this community. So I just want to tell you all, thank you very much. And uh, the, the state legislature and our governor are very interested uh, in keeping this partnership strong. Uh, we've introduced legislation in the last couple of years that were, that were, I think, important pieces of legislation, licensure, school enrollment things. And Governor John Bell Edwards is very interested in, uh, in keeping the relationship strong, and so are the members of the Senate and the House. So uh, just let us know how we can be, be of help in any way. Thank you. Anybody else, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Logan Morris, the uh, CEO of the Chamber of Commerce for Vernon Parish, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Colonel Smith, Ms. Cook, Mr. Williams, Mr. Shea. And I appreciate all of your remarks today and certainly all of the curriculum supervisors from the school board. <clears throat> the Chamber of Commerce is one of the primary um, organizations that worries about the business climate in Vernon Parish. Now, we have 240 members. We've appreciated a long-standing <clears throat> relationship with Fort Polk and the Vernon Parish School Board as a partner in education. Um, we have a number of uh, initiatives that we are pushing as part of our strategic plan, which coincide with these exact uh, initiatives that are here today. Uh, we are pushing for more STEM-related uh, activities. Uh, we are trying to focus on workforce development. Uh, we are looking for opportunities for students to graduate right out of high school and go to work. Uh, my members need people who are skilled who can go to work. Uh, so that, that's a that's a, a big a big one there. Uh, in that vein, I would also encourage the further development of a magnet program. Uh, one of the things that that you see from site selectors is the quality of the education system. It's not simply Fort Polk monitoring the education system. It is it is really something that happens across the board by any major industry that that is going to locate somewhere. And so, I would encourage a, a development of a magnet program of a larger scale. Uh, I know that takes money. Uh, and certainly time and staff, et cetera. But I think that's important for uh, making Vernon Parish an attractive uh, place to live, not only for Fort Polk, but for anyone. Uh, the chamber became aware last year of some grant opportunities that we may have missed out on, uh, both for Fort Polk related and otherwise, uh, because we did not have anyone in the parish who 
had a SAMS registration to serve as a federal contractor to receive federal funds and serve as fiscal agent. Uh, we have successfully applied for that and finished it. Uh, so we'll be partnering with uh, Fort Polk and Ms. Cook and the Vernon Parish School Board to make sure that it, when money becomes available, we have the correct uh, political subdivision in place to hold it. Um, we've instituted a job board. Uh, so if you are a military spouse coming to this area, we encourage you uh, to visit our website to check that out. Um, it is not fully developed yet. Um, Ms. Delgado is actually going to be given permissions to post on uh, behalf of Fort Polk there for available positions. Uh, I encourage Mr. K to do the same thing or at least tell us what, what position it is and we'll post it and monitor it for you. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that. A huge component for us this year is broadband. Um, in workforce development, in virtual learning, as well as, uh, in, in, as, well as public safety, broadband is an issue. Uh, we have about 18,000 households in Vernon Parish that do not have broadband uh, or, it, or it is below what the federal minimum standard is designed at uh, for, by the FCC standard. So we're working on that. Uh, it's a problem for Fort Polk. It's a problem for everyone in Vernon Parish. Uh, we want to make sure that military spouses that come here have the opportunity to work from home or work remotely if needed. And right now that is a, uh, that's a weakness that we have. So we're, we're, we're working on that. We are a partner education with the Vernon Parish School Board. Uh, many of our member businesses will be funding opportunities and um, actual events at schools uh, in the parish. Uh, in the past, we, we had teacher appreciation, which is a good thing, but we were already doing it. Um, this year, our focus is going to be on doing things that, that are critically important or directly impact the student and something they can be engaged in. So I'm working with Ms. Charlotte Cooper at the school board on that, so we're looking forward to that. Um, if you know of other things that the Chamber of Commerce locally can help you with, please let us know. Uh, let Colonel Smith's office know, and, and, and he and I can work together on it. Uh, we are more than happy to help you there. Um, and anything else the Chamber can do uh, for the Vernon Parish School Board, likewise, please let us know. So thank you very much. Um, last call. Anybody else? Ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Mr. Williams, sir? before I close it out? Uh, yeah, if I could just say a couple things. In closing, uh, number one, we appreciate this opportunity. You see, uh, we have a lot of good things going on that a lot of people don't know anything about. And, and you know, anytime we have the opportunity to come out and, and relay that information, uh, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, one of the conversations I always hear is whenever military dependents or military servicemen or at the end of their uh, assignment here, uh, they'll come by or I'll see them or, or they'll be talking at school about, you know, they really appreciated and they really uh, did enjoy their tenure while they were here. They were not so sure when they first got here because of being in Louisiana and several other things. But once they were on the back end of it and were ready to leave, a lot of them were not excited about leaving. They, they, and one of the things that they talked about was the quality education. So, you know, the challenge that I have and the challenge that Colonel Smith and I talk about just about every time we talk is, you know, how do we flip that? How do we reverse that? How do we get people talking like that on the front end and not on the back end? And I think a format, a program like we're doing here today, I think is working toward trying to flip the table, as we say, and get that talk going on the front end. We love to hear it on the back end. Don't get me wrong, don't stop that. But we want people to know that before they get here because a lot of times preconceived ideals can, can really tarnish and, and taint the reality of what's going on. You know, perception is reality until you change it. So we work very hard at trying to change that. And a lot of the information comes through this data, but most people do not pay much attention to data. Most people go by what they hear, word of mouth, things like that. So this is what we're trying to work on on that. Uh, the other thing that, that I'll mention is, you know, one of the things that is good about my job is when I get to go in, to the schools and visit the classrooms and see the kids. And, and you know, you see the teachers learning and you see the kids learning, and, and, and it's really a, a, a fascinating thing for me being an educator for 40 years now. But I can promise you that, that being said, I've never been to a classroom where all the military dependents sat on one side of the room and the non-military sat on the other, or I've never been in a classroom where anybody wore a, a decal that said, I'm a military dependent, and I'm not. 
you know, it, that's the beauty of this thing is that when these kids get in that classroom, they all get in there and they're all one. And I think we as a community and we as a service group and we as a school board and we as who, whatever organization we want, we need to try to take the lead of the kids and, and, and let's, you know, forget about some of our preconceived notions and some of our ideals and, and, and let's let the kids handle some of these issues because they're the ones that, that are there. Being, as Representative Owen said, I'm a military dependent myself. Uh, when I came here, there was a training base. That's part of the that preconceived image that people still have about Fort Polk. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I can remember, I, I don't want to date myself, but I can remember in three straight years, two of those three years, my father was assigned to Vietnam. And, and you know, I went to school every morning knowing that my dad was in Vietnam. Uh, and back in those days, we didn't have CNN and Fox News or whatever, you know. So we would get a letter every once in a while, uh, the airmail letters from Vietnam. And, you know, and, and his message to me always in the letters was, you know, even though you don't know anybody, even though you, you feel like you're, you're maybe outside, go in there and make a difference. It doesn't matter if nobody knows you when you get there. What matters is they know you when you get ready to leave. So I always remember that. And my dad always would tell me, you know, you're going to get out of this situation what you put into it. If you don't put anything in it, then don't expect anything out. And I think that's a lesson that, that I always remembered and I always was able to understand the plight of the military student because I was one of them. I know how it feels. I know it's a lot different now than it was back then, but there's still that feeling of knowing that you are a military dependent, whose father is deployed somewhere, and you're basically here at a, uh, in an area that you're not familiar with. But you have to make it familiar. You have to do the best you can with it. And that's what I try to, to guide my principles on when I'm trying to help the military student. So those are just things that, that I wanted to mention to, to you, and those are things that I think we try to do, and those are things that uh, we're going to continue to try to do to make Fort Polk and the Vernon Parish School System a better partnership. So thank you, Colonel Smith. Okay, um, Tiffany, until you, did I forget anything before I do closing comments? Do we forget anything? Um, no, sir, only that, you know, if your questions have not been answered yet, please put them in the comments. Mm -hmm. Please put them as a site suggestion um, into the interactive customer evaluation system. Um, please, if it's very, you know, you can go to Fort Polk School Support Services. So a slide will be up that have the links to all of those. Um, I want to thank Mr. Williams. Um, for sharing your story. And again, if you feel disconnected, please reach out so that we can get you connected um, and that you do make a difference in our school system while you're here. Um, attending each and every day is absolutely going to enhance our school systems. Um, and again, if you and your family want to be more involved, please reach out so that we can help you get connected. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I appreciate all of the support all of the participation. And what I wanted to do is take the last three minutes to address a couple of things that I, I heard throughout today and what I've heard from our parents. Um, so first and foremost, the narrative that Mr. Williams, the superintendent, talked about. Okay, so the narrative is this, and I just wanna, I'm gonna address it head on. So the narrative is when families Google Louisiana education, they see number 48, okay? That's a fact, and I've heard them say this to me. They Google number 48. The problem with the narrative is that's Louisiana as a state. Now, I talked about in the beginning is ACT performance out of our 30 connected schools we have between two parishes, we're number three and number four on ACT performance in our school systems here on Fort Polk. Number three and number four. Um, when it comes to reading and math, number three and number five in math and reading. Those are facts that you'll see how you can check our, our math and our data. And then lastly, our graduation rate, right? How we're preparing our high school students to go to college. We are number three. And again, the only school systems that beat us in the Army are JBLM and Fort Belvoir. So what I hear is number 48 in the nation, and I hear Fort Polk sucks, okay? And what I'm gonna tell you is, Fort Polk is supposed to suck in one area, and that is the training area, the box. And the majority of our Army experiences JRT in Fort Polk on the JRTC side. 
where they train Army Brigade combat teams, 10 to 13 uh, Brigade combat teams a year. And we can't forget what we, why, we're, why we exist and what we're for. Why we exist here is because we train Army Brigade combat teams to go to war if we're called upon to do it. And so it is tough, realistic training, and the majority of our Army only knows Fort Polk from the box. And so when I say number three, number five in math and reading, number three in ACT performance, ACT performance, and number three in preparing high school seniors to go to college, that doesn't suck to me. And so that's what we're gonna to try to get after, informing our parents and our spouses and our community about the great things that our 30 schools do in our surrounding area. So we're a quality of life installation. And so what you heard the team talk about today is a lot of quality of life initiatives. And so we are one of four Army installations that are Army quality of life. Why are we a quality of life? We're quality of life because of our location. And in 1941, our senior uh, decision makers and leaders decided they were gonna open Jared C. and Fort Polk because of the Louisiana maneuvers. That's how we started. And because of our location, we're not by a big city. And so what we do now is we focus a lot of the resources we have from the Army, from our DOD and from our community to really get after these 13 things you heard today. So these 13 concerns or focus areas you heard throughout the Education Summit today were, were used based on last year's feedback that we got from parents, from teachers, from administrators, from community members. And so we wanted to address each one of those 13. And we look forward to your feedback so we can take this to the next level and address even more. I heard three also key things from, um, from the community today. I heard communication, consistency, and commitment. What three powerful words there are. And so you have, there's no doubt with everybody in this room that we are committed to providing a quality education for our children. There's no doubt. And so we are all rowing in that direction. I also heard you can't be what you can't see. And so we're going to show you what we are and what we want to continue to be and hold us accountable to do that. And lastly, I heard it takes a community to raise a child. And you have this community here and you out there, give us some feedback so we can make sure that we're all part of the community. And so as Tiffany mentioned, if you did not um, provide your feedback on ICE through ICE or on the comments on Facebook that you're gonna see, this wonderful lady here and her team, please reach out to her and leverage her and her team to get after any questions or concern you have with education or schooling. And you'll get the number 337 531-6673, reach out and let's address those concerns. And I greatly appreciate every single body, every single individual who came today, who are part of this school system, uh, this community, and I, I'm looking forward to, to moving forward together. So thank you very much. And thank you for putting this together. I knew it took a lot from <laughs> you and the team, but I appreciate it, so thank you. Yes, thank you to all the team um, that helped me put this on. And again, uh, families, we want to hear from you.